Okay, so hello again, dears. <laughs> okay, for this part of the video, or for this video, now we'll talk about the different staining techniques, okay, and different types of stain. Uh, when we, uh, you know, stain at a, the smears that we have created from the previous video. So, usually what we do, if makareceive mong specimen again sa lab, so if na ay request for staining or smear preparation, so first, magamatag smear prep, okay? Maybe direct direct smears, meaning gikan yun sa specimen mismo, or indirect smear, gikan sa atong culture na, or sa atong gipatubo na daan. So after that is, of course, diba, following all the procedures for um, smear prep, and then air dragging, and of course, again, before starting staining, you have to fix, diba? So, the next part good sa smear preparation nato is staining. Now, again, these are staining smears for microscopy. Now, again, when you say staining, it's the artificial um, adding of colors to microorganisms. Not only microorganisms, but also other organisms. May it be cells, tissues, ba, and ana. Um, yeah, so we add color. Because again, why? Why do we have to add color? Because through the addition of the color, we can um, enhance or the observation of our bacteria and other organisms or tissues are enhanced in observation because guys boring kayo <laughs> if like color like example katurang smear prep na mong gigama if you muna siyang examine dayon under the bright field microscope wala kay makita kayo or it's like all black and white and you know maot kayo ang life diba if like color so you have to find someone who will add color to your life. Charot! Ngita kang crayon! Charot! Okay, joke lang. Alright, so again, same here. You know, we want to add color because again, we want to enhance our observation of the bacteria and furthermore, to ultimately identify them. Okay? Because um, through their different staining um, reactions, through their different staining characteristics, we can, um, um, or these can supplement no, the, their identification. Okay? So again, to enhance observation and appreciation also. Para siyang art. Okay? Alright? Um, also, yeah, differentiates one group of bacteria from another. Yeah, it's through the major staining procedure sa bacteriology, which is gram staining, um, na na-divide ang two types, two major types of bacteria, di ba? You have gram positive and gram negative. From then on, since nakabulo naman ta sa two major um, groups, easy na lang ang pag-identify sa kanila or easy na lang ang pag, you know, um, isolate and pag, pag no kung sa mga different culture media na kailangan, kung sa mga you know, antibiotics ultimately ang kailangan ay tambal nila, di ba? So that's the importance of staining. And lastly, it helps in the presumptive, yeah, as I mentioned, presumptive identification of bacteria and other special structures. Again, because again, um, through the addition of the colors, um, many other characteristics ang may identify. Okay? Alright. Now, we talk about the chemical um, composition of a stain. Of course, first is you have the chromogen. Um, this is just the colored compound, but it's not yet a stain. So if you siya ibutang sa imuhang organism or sa tissues, dili pa siya mo stay. Oh, pares niya. Okay? <laughs> dili pa siya mo stay. But it imparts the color to the stain. But it's not yet the stain. Okay? Alright, the chromogen. The chromogen pagod is um, composed of your... Um, ah, okay. And the oxochrome. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So chromogen and oxochrome, oxochrome, all together, they form the stain. Now, the purpose of the oxochrome is it... Uh, forms the ionization property. When you say ionization, it forms salts, okay, and it crosses or it forms bridges, okay, or mga links to the um, cells para mas mu, mu stay ang stain, okay? So if wala ang, ang oxochrome, usually ang chromogen, dili siya mu stay, or dili niya mus, mas stay sa cells, okay? So what you have, or what you need is a oxochrome para again, mu form siya mga uh, ionic links, okay, or mga salts na mu bind sa mga fibers or tissues or sa cells mismo. Okay, that's the oxochrome. And your chromogen, again, it's ultimately composed of the benzene and chromophore. Okay, ang chromophore ang nagbutang o color sa benzene. Okay, so basically, it's a solvent. Your chromophore is dissolved by benzene. Okay, and the chromophore imparts the color to benzene. And all together, sila ang nag, ano, sa chromogen. Understood? And again, a chromogen is just a colored compound. It's not yet a stain. Kailangan siya siya oxochrome. Okay, alright? So please take note. Benzene, kailangan yung benzene because this would, in a way, parang stabilize the reactions, okay? And also, it would dilute your chromophore, okay? That imparts the color to your benzene. And slang together, they form the chromogen, which is the colored compound lang of the stain. It's not yet the stain. Because again, if walay oxochrome, walay mo form ng mga um, salt bridge, uh, mga salts or ionic links to tissues or cells. Um, para mas muste ang stain. Okay, so altogether chromogen and oxochrome, that's now the composition of your stain generally. Okay, alright. Now we go now to the different classification of stains. I've discussed this niba sa inyo hang intro to micro. First is your basic stains or dyes. When we say basic, it's cationic, so it's positively charged. Therefore, unsa ang iyahang ma attract na mga molecules. Of course, the negatively charged. Okay, so ana lang, di ba? Opposite 
um, attracts and like charges repel. Feel na ako mo nang wala minag work together kay like charges joke lang. Okay, all right. So again, opposite charges attract, diba? General rule in chemistry. So your basic stains, again, cationic, they're positively charged. Therefore, they're attracted to negatively charged molecules. And a good example of your basic stains, you have your methylene blue, basic fuchsin, malachite green, crystal violet, and safranin. Okay, all right. And you have your acidic stains or dyes, of course, opposite, anionic, negatively charged. Therefore, they are attracted to positively charged molecules. I sorry, na change na. Positively charged molecules. An example is your eosin, rose bengal, and acid fuchsin. In your histotechnology, guys, na namo histotech this year, you will have a lot of stains. <laughs> I hate those. The ganju kaayo, and it's different colors. So each type of tissue na nasa own stains na lista. So yes, andam lang. Okay, all right. Now we go into different staining techniques. Now that's a different class. If when we say classification of stains, it could be basic or um, acidic. Now for staining techniques, depending on sa method. So first is your simple staining. When we say simple staining, only one dye. So basically, basin imurang gi apply ang methylene blue, India ink ra ba yung gigamit, um, safranin ra ba na just just one dye. Simple staining. And when we say differential staining, two or more. To divide the bacteria into two groups. Example, a very good example of differential staining, you have gram staining mismo, acid fast staining, on um, different staining procedures pa. Usually differential staining. Basta ganit, two or more dye to differentiate two groups of bacteria or two groups of organisms. So again, gram staining and acid fast staining in the bacteriology uh, subject. Okay? And you have special staining. Wow, sana all special. May pang staining special. Char. Um, special staining is you want to stain only a specific part. Of an of a bacteria example like ganan ra ka na flagella ang stain ang cell wall ra ba ang stain ang capsule ra ba ang stain di ba okay so that's a different uh, types of staining techniques please do not be confused with uh, the different classification of stains that's again basic or acidic and from the staining techniques again it could be simple only one dye differential staining more than two again to divide two different groups of bacteria or organisms. Good examples of bacteriology in a field is your gram staining and acid fast staining. And you have special staining. When you say special staining, you want to stain only a specific um, part of, of the organism or bacteria. Example, flagella raba or cell wall. Inana. Okay? All right. Now we go now to different examples of special stains. I mentioned that in the intro to micro, diba? you have cell wall stain, you have the dire stain, diba? cell wall. Or uh, uh, sana, review lang. Kinsa dito mga cell, all of your bacteria usually have cell wall. But kinsa dito mga cell wall uh, deficient, meaning wala sila cell wall, you have, since na namo ani sa bakte karon. So review lang, you have mycoplasma and urea plasma. Muni sila mga cell wall deficient, wala sila cell wall. Okay? So cell wall deficient. So since wala man sila cell wall, do you think mugana ang dire stain nila? No. <laughs> okay? So dili mugana ang dire stain nila. Okay. Muna siya mga cell wall deficient. Okay? So, wala sila cell wall. Alright. Next, you have your capsular stains. Again, his, gins, and thonies. Kisa to mga naikapsules, di ba? Unsa to na-mention ako sa intro to micro. Usually, if an organism is encapsulated, unsa ganito na organism, ang, ay unsa na disease, usually ang common nila, you have meningitis. Sana naman, na remember to, meningitis. Basta gani, ang organisms are encapsulated, Usually, the most common disease or the common denominator, common disease na ilang ginakos is meningitis or inflammation of your meninges. Okay, capsular stain. Kisa mga example organisms na encapsulated, Klebsiella and Neisseria meningitidis. Example rin siya. Pwede pong hemophilus. Okay, so they have capsule. Okay, not dili ni tanan ha, just some. Okay, you'll explain pa ng Ma'am Teddy. Okay. You're in good hands. Okay, kaayo. All right. So again, capsular stain. Next, you have for metachromatic granules, you have Lamb, Nicers, and Alberts. Again, for any bacterium diphtheriae, na mention na ako ni. Unsa tong um, C diphtheriae are very um, uh, good examples of bacteria na produce metachromatic granules. So unsa nito names alam metachromatic granules? And yun yung batchmate si Babes Ernst. Yes, naman. So review na niya Babes Ernst. Granules. Muna siya yung name sa metachromatic granules sa Corrine bacterium diphtheriae. Babes Ernst granules. Okay. Alright. So, review lang na siya. So, again, Lamb, Nicers, and Alberts. And you have your spore, of course, Dorners and Schaefer Fulton. Kinsa ganito itong duha. Ka medically important bacteria na maproduce ang spores, you have only two. Kinsa to siya? Bacillus and Clostridium. BC. Sige sila produce ang spores, kaya na BC sila. Okay. Kina ni balik balik sarog wala pa na memorize okay Bacillus clostridium sila ra nang na ice spores na medical important okay all right okay next you have flagellar stains 
Grace, Life, Son, Fisher, and Cons. So as you can see, kanilang flagella. Of course, flagella, are, I'm sure, I hope you're all familiar, these are um, organ of locomotion. Organs of locomotion. So these are, again, one of also another mga virulence factors sa bacteria kaya maka-escape sila sa immune system or maka-spread sila because of their flagella. And not all bacteria are, are flagellated. Okay, we have a different activity for motility. Okay, but most of your gram-neg bacilli, they are, or most of your bacilli rather are uh, motil. And all cocci are non-motil, guys, ha? Walay staph na motil, ginoko. <laughs> Sinasabi ko talaga sa inyo. Or strep, walay co co cocci na motil. Maybe na ubang mga not well known pero medically important as far as i know all cocci are non motile just go okay all right again flagellar stay grace life sons and fisher and cons and negative stain when we say negative stain you want to um stain the background okay ang background nimo is stain so mulitaw na mulitaw ng organism and again india ink india ink india ink kinsa ganito na organism sa india ink you have cryptococcus neoformans this one so basically, your Cryptococcus neoformans, guys, is a yeast. Okay, not a no char. Cryptococcus neoformans is a yeast. It's, it has a capsule, a polysaccharide capsule. Yes, naman. Polysaccharide capsule. Okay? Polysaccharide capsule ang Cryptococcus neoformans. And usually, makita nato ni siya, ang iyahang um, um, complication is, of course, meningitis sa mga immunocompromised patients, mga HIV or other diseases na ka makapa immunocompromised sa patient. Again, India Inc., India Inc., Cryptococcus Neoformans. Asa pa ni India Inc.? Let's see if ma remember pa. Asa ni na India Inc., unsa pa na test in parasitology ang magamit ng India Inc.? Pag-inject sa uterine branches sa tenia. O, di ba? Wala na nakaremember. But sa tenia saginata and tenia solium, if you want to visualize the uterine branches of tenia species, adult, um, you inject it with India Inc. Okay, all right. Again, pero first, usually organism mo sulit sa mind. If India Inc., India Inc., it's usually Cryptococcus neoformans. So, asa ang Cryptococcus neoformans? Ana, sir, kanin sila? So, kanin halo diri, that's its capsule. Meaning, wala siya na penetrate sa India Inc. Okay, kay polysaccharide siya. Okay? All right. So, that's for your special stains. Now, I'll have a different video for gram staining because, again, this is quite lengthy. A review na lang po of what I've discussed sa intro to micro. So, hopefully, hopefully lang yun. Just um, a refresher. Okay? All right. So, I'll see you on the next video. Okay.